Hello and welcome to Crop Roadshow. In this series, you'll discuss the history you'll discuss the history of three or more crop cultivars, starting with the history of the crop itself. Then we'll discuss then I'll rank them for agronomic traits, which will be out of three, disease resistance traits, which will be ranked out of two, one for each major disease, and two points for historical breeding use and future breeding use. Let's begin. Now onto Orleans Renette. Orleans Renette. Orleans Renette is one of the many descendants of the Golden Renette, alongside several other cultivars of apples such as Blenheim Orange, other famous apple varieties like Blenheim Orange, and Kaiser Wilhelm, the former being one of the ancestors of Cox Orange Pippin. The genetic analysis of this apple suggests also that Blenheim Orange and Orleans Renette are both siblings, or Orleans Renette is an intermediary between Golden Renette and Blenheim Orange, in terms of the family lineage. It was first grown in Europe a decade or so prior to 1776, when it was mentioned by the Dutch pomologist Johan Hermann Knopp. It is widely grown in France and parts of England, for its use as a baked apple or as a fresh eating apple that has a very nutty flavor which some describe as a mixture of citrus, nuts, and apple, and pear. This apple remains popular in several circles within Europe. Now on to the ranking of this apple. There's inconsistency regarding disease resistance. One source says it's almost immune to all diseases. The two other sources I have, however, say that it's both susceptible to scab and fire blight. To that end, I was just going to put a question mark beside disease resistance and amend it for future uses. For the time being, I will only be counting breeding use, so be out of 5, counting the agronomic traits as well. The Russian variety, called a saffron pippin in English, was bred by crossbreeding Orleans Renette with an experimental variety in the early 1900s. Similarly, an open pollinated variety selected from a pip of Orleans Renette, called Wider's Renette, was also bred from this cultivar. There doesn't seem to be as much applicability in terms of breeding outside of that, so I give it a 1 out of 2. In terms of agronomic traits, it's biannual bearing, so only blooms and produces fruit once every two years. And the best flares only manifest in warm locations. But otherwise, it grows quite well, and the storage length is quite good, up to 3 months. As such, I give it a 2 out of 3. Now on to Brownlee's Russet. Brownlee's Russet was raised in the mid-1800s by the nurseryman and breeder William Brownlee. It is a russet apple in similar look and feel to Ashmead's Kernel. Flavor-wise, it's similar to Ashmead's Kernel, a very high acid, high sugar apple that tastes like a sour candy. Although apparently Brownlee's Russet is a little bit sweeter. I'll test it out for myself later on. Now on to the traits du jour. From a disease resistance perspective, it resists scab pretty well, as well as mildew and canker but not fire blight. Since mildew and canker are not the big things but still cause trouble in certain areas within Canada, I give it a 1.5 out of 2 for disease resistance. As for breeding use, due to the weird lineage of the pear drop flavored apples, I cannot make any determinations. So that'll be a big question mark, so it'll be once again made out of five. Like most russet apples, they biannually bear. So this can be altered somewhat. And due to its unique flavor, I would say give it a three out of three. So 4.5 out of five, with the extra one point coming from the fact that I've got a soft spot for russets. So there's my bias right there. Now on to Golden Harvey. This apple is a very ancient apple. Although it was first written down by the palmologist Evelyn in the 1600s, it was known prior to that. Due to its unique flavor of intense, sweet, sharp, spicy aromas and flavors, and due to the fact it's a very firm, juicy, and crisp apple, it remained popular until 
the 1800s, specifically the late 1800s, due to its small size. The flush is remarkably yellow, hence the name Golden Harvey, and it has been historically used for making cider as well. Now on to the traits. In terms of disease resistance, there's a big question mark around there, because I couldn't find any information regarding this. I'll have to discuss this, or amend this, at a later date, after a few periods of observation of the tree I currently have access to. In terms of breeding, several heritage apples have been bred from Golden Harvey. The Bringewood Pippin was bred by crossbreeding Golden Pippin with Golden Harvey, creating what seems to be a more mellow combination of both flavor traits. Thomas Andrew Knight also created several other crosses with Golden Harvey, such as crossbreeding a Siberian crab apple with Golden Harvey, and bred the cultivar Siberian Harvey, a crab apple sized apple that was quite juicy and sweet, and a crab apple with greater cider character traits called Siberian Bittersweet, with both cultivars winning awards. So to that end, I give this a 3 out of 3 for breeding. In terms of agronomic character traits, unlike most other russets, it bears yearly, but takes a little bit longer to get to bearing size. By the same point, it's also hardier than most other russet apples. In terms of storage, it stores for 5 months, but the fruit are quite small, in comparison to even earlier heritage apples. As a result, I give it a 2 out of 3, for a grand total of 4 out of 5. Now on to our last cultivar for this episode, Margill. Margill was first cultivated in the 1680s in France in the Garden of Versailles. A sample of this cultivar was brought to England by Mr. William Temple, and was later offered as a cultivar by Kinnison Brompton's Park Nursery in the mid-1700s. It is the direct ancestor of Ripston Pippin, which in turn was used to breed Cox Orange Pippin. It's still widely grown to this day within certain circles in England, both as a heritage apple and as a regular apple. Now onto the traits. In terms of disease resistance, it's resistant to scab, but susceptible to blight and canker. As such, I give it a 1 out of 2 for disease resistance since canker can be controlled by simply not having acidic soil. There's little information on agronomics, but it seems to bear regularly, and bear decently well, so 3 out of 3. And of course, due to its very noteworthy descendants, both Ripson Pippin and Cox Orange Pippin, I have to give it a 2 out of 2 for breeding traits, so that would be a total of 6 out of 7. And that about covers everything, thank you for watching.